Oh, Professor Gambari, let, let me just put you on hold there for a second or two as we're having a, a very nice discussion here in the studio as well. Uh, Kennedy is also with us of the Transition Monitoring Group. Let me just ask you this very quickly. 4,000 of your people are being deployed, uh, are being deployed rather, for this uh, very exercise that we're expecting, and you are going to go ahead with this using coded messages. How is this expected to, to work out? Um, we have actually trained um, all the observers. They have been accredited by INEC, and they are going to be on ground. If you remember in 2011, uh, the role that the TNG played actually helped in redefining the credibility of the election. Um, we have trained them, and they are going to be all across Nigeria to give us uh, a, a minute by minute report of what they found uh, on ground on election day. So, you know, this is a uh, lot new to you because uh, you've been there. Uh, uh, observing elections in the country. Basically, when we talk about color codes, uh, which INEC uh, has said they will uh, use on that day, the, the actual words say corresponding color codes that will match the ballot boxes uh, to show which uh, goes for what, the which uh, on that day. How much of awareness have we been able to give to the people regarding this particular election, knowing for all that we have three ballots on that day, House of Representatives, the Senate, and, and the presidency. Uh, well, I, I, I think that um, that's one area that I, I don't think that INEC has done enough in, term, in terms of voter education. Uh, the discussion around the color code actually came not just quite uh, about two or three weeks, you know, and I, I, I would have thought that I uh, would have been doing that earlier so that people can be able to understand. But I, I think the ad hoc staff on ground should be able to help in terms of uh, explaining to people. And that's also the other issue uh, when we talk about INEC uh, plans and logistics, whether they have been able to uh, build the capacity of the ad hoc staff to be able to respond to the questions that uh, they will face uh, at the election, uh, on the election day. Do you think that uh, the, the reassurance that INEC itself said that ad hoc staffs would be allowed to sort out the ballot boxes, unlike before, uh, when if you put your wrong, the wrong color code for another one, uh, it is null and void. But this time around, they are saying that they would they will allow for sorting after the elections. Do you think that that is any reassurance? Uh, well, I think it will, it will help because it's obvious that there will be a lot of complications. We're in a country where we have majority of the people that are not very literate. Uh, so if, if we don't um, uh, explain which is which to them uh, in, 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 in the right manner, that could probably cause uh, mm. some, some problems. So I think that that, that, that that should be done, but in a very transparent manner. So mm. that that would also not lead to uh, people not believing in the credibility of whatever the ad hoc staff is doing. Now, let me put you in pause too and I'll get back to Professor Gamberi. Uh, let me ask you this, Professor, very quickly, your thoughts, first of all, about the Transition Monitoring Group. Would you say that their actions so far is able to push the agenda of what we're all going for as a country in this election? I believe that I don't know um, too much about the details of the activities, but I want to assure you that uh, in principle, all those NGOs and civil society organizations who can help to ensure transparency of the process of these elections, the activities should be very welcome. Uh, because as I said, uh, the eyes of the world are not on us, but nobody can love us more than we love ourselves. And so to the extent that we are taking initiatives and, uh, and organizations such as, as them are doing their work, they should be very much welcome. How confident are you on the preparations of INEC so far? From what you've seen, do you think that we're headed for very good, incredible elections? I believe so, because we've talked to the INEC uh, several times. That is, I mean, the Council of the Wives of the Savannah Center. We have also, the Council of the Wives also physically uh, gone to, uh, in, in its visitations, Mena, Sokoto, Kano, uh, Yola, Port Harcourt, uh, Onicha and uh, Lagos, of course, and uh, and Abekuta, and uh, and we are, we are we are satisfied that uh, a lot has been done to ensure not just the technical process of uh, the voting, but uh, to the transparency of the process, including some of the uh, equipment that they intend to use. Oh, Professor, I do not know if you will be monitoring these elections, but would you kind of let us in on if you will be monitoring it and where you've been monitoring it from? No, 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 I, I, I'm not a monitor, I'm not even an observer, but obviously uh, I am watching very, very closely because uh, I, I very much am in touch with uh, several observers who have come from the uh, ECOWAS 
African Union, the Commonwealth, the United Nations, uh, and the United States. Mm. What I gather from all of this is uh, the talk about uh, preparations and uh, how well they've been able to tell Nigerians they are ready. I'm talking about the electoral umpire. Uh, they've always said it before, and we have seen what happened in terms of logistics in the, uh, previous elections, specifically in the Anambra elections, uh, yeah. Ondo elections, Edo elections. Uh, they told us that they were ready, but we saw some bit of lapses in that regard coming uh, to logistics. With the assurances we've gotten so far from uh, Professor Jaga and his team, uh, do you think, uh, well, they, from your own feeling, that they must have learned their lessons from those uh, previous elections uh, to the extent that they would safeguard such loopholes in logistics? Yes, that, that's a very good question, but you know that even Professor Jega himself has become uh, a lot more experienced in these matters. His first election, I believe, was 2011, and since then, he has organized his men. He has been all over the world to see how elections are, are held in a transparent and credible manner, and I believe that he's in a much better position, and his team, to do that. But I've always argued that there cannot be perfect elections, even technically. You remember that in the United States, not very long ago, you had the issue of card and uh, ballot uh, uh, papers that are being questioned. The important thing is to ensure that the overwhelming number of people who are registered to vote, who want to vote, are able to do so. And they do so in a transparent, non threatening manner, so that the outcome will reflect the, the, the wishes of the people of this country. I believe uh, I met, as a leader, as the umpire, uh, they've demonstrated capacity, they've come, demonstrated the will, but they should be supported by all the other um, electoral management teams, uh, which will make uh, their work uh, end in, uh, in success. When you talk about support, now one key thing here uh, is one of the players, and that is political parties. How much of voter education do you think we've able to gather from political parties? If you look at the guidelines by INEC, they say polls will open at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning and in places where they don't allow mingling of male and female they allow them file out in that order male to the side and the other side women and do you think that political parties have been able to sensitize the electorates to that extent that they know that this is how it will operate and even talking about color codes that will show what you're doing on that uh, day no, I don't think they've done enough. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, the political parties have been engaged in, in, in campaigning and canvassing and the rallies, you know. Uh, I don't think they've done enough voter education, frankly. And uh, this is unfortunate, but we hope that uh, as we deepen our democracy, uh, the political parties will take their responsibilities for voter education very seriously. They will also take uh, very seriously, more seriously, uh, education about the behavior uh, of, uh, of, the, of the supporters of the political uh, parties and the candidates a lot more than they have done. But, but I believe that Nigerians want to exercise their right to vote, they are anxious to vote, and uh, whether or not this voter education uh, is uh, adequate, yeah, the people will, will exercise the right to vote. Do you think that this controversy that we had over whether or not the card readers were legal, whether or not it was okay to use it because some people did not have their permanent voter cards, do you think that that conversation helped a great deal? Not really, because in my view, first of all, the authorities authorized, paid for, budgeted for this card reader. And we, uh, and so we knew that they were going to be used. Um, it, it, it's unfortunate that things that ought to have been settled long term before, the PVCs, the, uh, the card readers, uh, uh, should, should still be issued days or weeks before the election. And worst of all, uh, to begin to attack the umpires, uh, of, of the, which is uh, INEC. Uh, uh, so I believe that the Council of the Wise of the Savannah Center made a very strong statement that anything that uh, should facilitate transparency uh, and, uh, and the credibility of these elections must, must be used must be employed because it's so as to ensure an outcome that we can all line up behind. Professor, is it absolutely necessary 
when we have the preaching of the vote and go home as to we already have the uh, card readers is it absolutely necessary that people be encouraged to wait for the votes to be counted i think it's the experience of the past i think we're a little bit behind the experience of the past is that ballot boxes are snatched ballot boxes disappear and and all kinds of uh, unethical and uh, unhelpful activities uh, have happened uh, in the past so maybe is that hangover uh, of the experience of the past that is really responsible people wanted to say let us uh, uh, let us see you know and um, so that's what uh, may have been responsible but i think that once it's been decided that by the uh, political the INEC and the political parties uh, and i believe the I inspector general police has also stepped back uh, and if you're wrong step back from an earlier position that you vote and go uh, i think we should uh, give it a chance it will just enhance because credibility of election is not just about the fact but also perception so if uh, they have been there will help in the perception of credible and free and fair elections i believe that uh, that should be considered uh, and done